it's useful to see Lent in a bigger context. We know in the secular world we have the rhythm of events throughout the year. We have Christmas and the sales and the celebrations and then we work towards the summer and so on. And similarly in the context of the, the year of the faith community, there are different seasons that emphasise parts of the Christian message. In other words, during Advent, we underline the fact that we are an expectant people looking forward to something that will come in the future. At Christmas, we celebrate the solidarity of God with us. We celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus at Easter, the mission of the church at Pentecost and so on. And during Lent, we look at one particular aspect of the core of the gospel, where Jesus talks about the necessity for prayer, fasting and almsgiving, all in the context, not of self-improvement, but in the context of that basic call to repentance that we get. So Lent is one of those seasons of the year and also one of those seasons of the heart when we try to interact with the reality of the rich gospel message and learn that story about who we are, about the journey that we're on, about the personal exodus that is part of our own individual life story so that we can actually allow the Lord to touch our hearts and not just go through a series of dates or events. So I think Lent is about underlining one of the core elements of the gospel message. And if we think of it only as a time when we feel miserable or only as a time when we try to slim and get fit for the marathon later in the year, I think we're missing the whole point. It's all throughout the church's year focused on how we can know better the message of Jesus and the salvation that Jesus offers us. Well, I think um, we find um, many images in scripture to enable us to focus on what the message of Lent is. The, the church uh, liturgy focuses very much on, for example, the, the Exodus story, that movement from slavery to, to freedom and all the challenges, the temptation to fall back that are there. Then we have, particularly in the later Sundays of Lent, we have great stories like the Samaritan woman coming to the well and discovering the water welling up to eternal life. The man born blind, seeing Jesus as the light of the world, the story of Lazarus and so on. So I think there's a rich fabric in there for those who take the time to engage with the, 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 the rich symbolism of the, the Lenten liturgy, the, the, the biblical companions that we have there. Um, if we only see it as a time of fasting or how much longer do I have to go in order to be free from this terrible thing that's lent? I think we're missing the point. It's a deep journey, and the longest journey, as someone said, is not into the wilderness, but from the head to the heart. It's part of that personal interior journey, focused not on making things difficult for ourselves, but on discovering the real sources of life. I think we're all very conscious in 2012 of the fact that um, these are difficult times, not just in Ireland, but in many ways across the Western world. And the Pope's message, the Holy Father's message for Lent this year is about solidarity for and with one another. And I think in a time of difficulty, it actually can bring out in a much better way than the individualism of success can, the need for solidarity, for people to work together to ensure that what we give up or what penance we do actually isn't just going to putting money somewhere, but actually going to building up people because that's our most valuable um, resource that we have. In other words, I saw figures at the beginning of Lent which suggested that last year, during Lent, Trocra raised 8 million euros, huge amount of money. But during the same period of time, we in Ireland um, consumed 800 million euros worth of alcohol. In other words, what Trocra got was equivalent to one half day's drinking money during Lent. If we cut our drink by 10% and give it to Trocra, they would have raised 80 million rather than just 8 million. So I think the whole focus is saying, how can we genuinely look at what's essential in our lives, what the needs of others are, and how we can actually enrich ourselves through penance, and serve others at the same time, and thus build up that message of the Eucharistic Congress, which means that communion with Christ enriches communion with one another, and our communion together as the body of Christ actually is part of our worship of the Lord and her recognition of his presence as the incarnate God in our midst.